Welcome to the creative community. I'm your host, David Starkey, and my guest this time is Marie Shep. Marie, welcome. Thank you. Happy you, to be here. You are an artist of incomparable talent, so oh. really excited <laughs> to have you here. And we're going to look at, at some, some recent pieces that you've been doing. Yes. Um, it, it, it's been a while since you were on the show. In fact, I think, did I do it in the, the basement of a hotel <laughs> with right. you? Right. Rose Snell had a gallery right. in the bottom of uh, the Canary Hotel. It, I, I like it was called that. something yeah, else back then. The yeah, now it's the Finch and Fork. Yeah, and I had a series of paintings, and you spoke with Ro and I. Yeah, and and we I remember walking around, and, and they were they were really glorious. Um, for people who weren't at that show, can you describe what they were? Um, sometimes I can describe them. <laughs> uh, most of them were abstractions. Um, they're paintings on. Um, Hard board, mm -hmm. uh, very fine surfaces, and the imagery. Some of the images were things that actually I'm kind of starting to return to. Mm. They were what I would call skirts, and mm. but they were almost like inverted flower forms, mm -hmm. uh, a few figurative forms, and then other sort of nebulous sort of shapes, right. uh, sort of atmospheric kinds of things. That's what I remember, a, a floral meets abstraction kind of a theme going through. Yes, yeah. yes. So is that something that you've continued to do? Well, I think one thing that's common in that work uh, and throughout my work is a, a, a bit of ambiguity, mm -hmm. that I'm interested in having enough of an image, per se, to get the, um, the viewer engaged mm -hmm. and to maybe trigger their imagination mm -hmm. into something else. So I don't want it be, to be um, like a realist painting right. where you are specifically directed and you know what you're looking mm -hmm. at. So I would say that ambiguity is uh, continuous. I mean, a, a lot of artists cherish ambiguity. Why, why is that so, so important to you? Well, I think it engages the viewer. I think of it similar to maybe uh, in poetry, um, you know, if you have several layers of meaning, mm -hmm. it's much richer. And so um, I was in, when I talk to my students, I talk about purposeful ambiguity, mm -hmm. or if the piece doesn't make sense in <laughs> any way. It, yes, exactly, because you don't even realize it's ambiguous, right, right, you know. Yeah. But I, I think it's something, it allows you to develop layers of meaning. Mm -hmm. So I think that's. You know, sometimes I'm more successful, <laughs> right. but um, when it's not super clear, I think it holds our attention okay. more. Well, we've, we've got some images that we're <coughs> going to look at today, and we're going to start off with a piece called From Me, uh, From M to Me to Mine. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. So let's, let's bring that up. It, this is a, something from a, a good while ago. Right, late 80s, 1990. Okay. And the exhibition was at the old Contemporary Arts Forum, um, which is now the organization is called uh, MCA, it's the right. Contemporary Art. Uh, place here in Santa Barbara. What are um, we looking at? This is a charcoal and pastel drawing that's seven feet by 21 feet. Wow. And I made a proposal to create that work of art in the gallery over a period of a week or so um, and allow people to come in in the afternoon. I would work for about five hours every day in the morning and then people could come in in the afternoon and take a look at it and kind of watch it in progress. Mm -hmm. um, and I was pretty nervous to do this because right. I'm so used to it being in a private studio. Sure, yeah. And a lot of my work evolves. I don't always have it planned out. Mm -hmm. And so it was sort of like one worry. It's like, what if I fall <laughs> flat on my face? But then I, I got to the point where like the postman, in the morning all the employees right. there would be there. They were already looking, watching. <clears throat> watching, you yeah. know. The postman would come in and, oh, it looks great, you know. <laughs> and you realize nobody's going to come in and say, oh, that's terrible. Are you kidding? <laughs> what are you doing with that red? <laughs> <laughs> right, move it over. So. Well, that reminds me of, <clears throat> I think it was also the same place our friend Rafael Perea yes. was, was actually drawing in a cage, in a glass cage, yes. while people watched him draw. The drawing, yeah. yes, yeah. yes, like a, for d hours. Yeah, and that's a, a different experience altogether. Yeah, yeah. Let's take a look at the next piece, which is also from a, a, a while earlier ago. Times, yeah, earlier times, yeah. Earlier times, and I think this is in the Santa Barbara Museum of Art, right? Yes, there was an exhibit last summer that Julie Joyce, the curator there, put together called Drawings from the 70s. 
And so there are, um, the three pieces on the left are mine. The one on the right is Michelle Stewart, a, another artist, an internationally known artist. But um, these were done in 1979 when I was living in New York. Mm -hmm. And the work is, again, ambiguous, a little bit more atmospheric and that. So, um, yeah. So it, it, I just kind of wanted to show you a little bit of things from the past. Yeah. And well, as you moved from New York to Santa Barbara, I mean, how would you say your work has changed over the years? Well, uh, when I first moved to town, it was kind of jarring after being in, in the New York. The capital part. <laughs> yes. And, and, you know, the visual environment was right. so very different. And even though I was a Northern California coming here, I was stunned by the beauty. And mm -hmm. so uh, at that time, I was... Uh, making, I made a group of paintings that were taken from real life and mm -hmm. were a little bit more realistic mm -hmm. than a lot of my work. And that's also something that I keep going back and forth. It's like how much to make that reference, that mm -hmm. ambiguity, and how much to pull away. Those, that uh, series of three uh, pieces that we were just looked at in the museum were a lot more uh, abstracted, mm -hmm. non-objective. Mm -hmm. And some of that reflects the fact that when I was in school in New York, I was studying at Hunter College, mm -hmm. which is a very much a formalist color field painter, paintings um, artist there. Mm -hmm. And I was one of few back in that at that time who was using imagery. Mm -hmm. And so was that frowned upon? It wasn't frowned upon. It, there was a shift at that time in New York where new images, there was sort of the new image painting show was shown at the Whitney and people, neo-expressionism, some imagery started coming back. Mm -hmm. um, but in my particular environmental, uh, educational environment, it just wasn't the training of most of the people there. So there was a lot more formal and you didn't really talk about content mm -hmm. or meaning. Mm -hmm. or, or the image, so I've kind of gone back and forth. Right, we, I'm curious about, uh, as we talk about influences, you're here with a bunch of other artists, including your husband, yes. <laughs> Dave yep. Goodman. Um, how has that sort of affected the work that you've done, being a part of folks around you doing different and similar things? Right, well, you know, that's a good question. I think that perhaps my, the physical environment influences me maybe more than mm. the artist. I mean, obviously there are artists throughout time that I've been interested in, uh, maybe influenced by. Um, Who would I you say off the top of your head? Oh gosh, some of the early American painters, um, Birchfield, uh, Dove, mm -hmm. you know, O'Keefe. Um, when I was in New York, Gustin was mm -hmm. um, an important artist. Elizabeth Murray. I studied with Ron Gorchoff and Ralph Humphrey. Um, there's, there's Those probably people. too many yeah, too. Many to, to do, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I also love uh, pre-Renaissance uh, artwork, especially Northern European, mm -hmm. because it's before the work is a little kind of odd. It's you really know? odd. Isn't yeah, it? <laughs> and I love that because. It's, Perspective it, is still <laughs> something that's being figured out. Exactly. Right? And the, so there's a little bit more of a primitive, not primitive, it was symbolic. Right. It's a little bit more reliant on symbolism, mm -hmm. and um, I like that. Well, one of the other things that your work is really influenced by is nature. And so yes. let's, let's go back, and, yeah. and, and that's kind of going to be the focus, I think, for most of the rest of our conversation, um, is the, the pieces that you've been working on. So recently. this is a, a group of four drawings that um, are on exhibit right now at the Vita Art Center down in Ventura. Mm -hmm. There's a show called The Drawing Room. Right. And so there's a number, I think there's 10 artists or so in that show, all focusing in on drawing. These are pen and ink and wash drawings that I've done on handmade paper that is from India. I have, I do make my own paper and do drawings on them, but it just so happens that this is um, paper that I did not make, I, I purchased. Okay. And so this imagery that you'll see in there uh, gets, the process of me making these drawings is very important to me. Mm -hmm. It's about sitting in nature and looking very carefully. And so this is a one, uh, a close up. 
I uh, take... One of the Vita pieces. Yes, and I take these and then um, I've been working in the print studio for about nine years, mm -hmm. uh, experimenting with printmaking. So I've used these drawings and translated them into prints, mm -hmm. use the image in prints. I'm showing this, this is a um, big boulder that's up on Westmont campus. And this was my inspiration for that previous drawing and a whole series of drawings. And so just to give you an example of how I make those drawings, I'll sit in nature and I use a technique that is very much like blind contour drawing, which is a, a, a technique that's used when teaching drawing, where okay. you look at an object and you don't really look at what you're drawing. What your doing, but yeah. what I have learned is that it really pulls you into looking very carefully. Mm -hmm. And you get to choose what you're looking at. And so I purposefully am not choosing to make a picture mm -hmm. of the boulder, mm -hmm. but I'm just experience, I'm interested in experiencing it. It's about your it. experience of experiencing the boulder, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And I'm very much, most of my work is embedded in drawing and mm -hmm. comes out of drawing. And I'm interested in the idea of a drawing as a trace of an activity. Mm -hmm. um, and this was something that kind of goes back many years. I studied with Rosalind Krauss in New York. And this is one of her uh, thesis about uh, photography that it's a trace of life, mm -hmm. it's a trace of, of light. And I, I found that it's a really important, drawing is, is so intimate in the process if you're studying something from observation because you have a relationship with it that you don't have in any other way. Mm -hmm. Taking a photograph is different me sitting here talking to mm -hmm. you is different, but if I were to draw you... start drawing you, me, it's a whole different ballgame. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's... It, it's something maybe we're even losing in our society, yeah. but there it, it's um, very satisfying. It's very meditative. And so for me, this has become um, sort of a practice, a meditative practice mm -hmm. that I use. And so it's not... It, the drawing becomes a byproduct right. in a way. And, you know, I, I think drawing for our audience out there, there's a lot of good drawing instruction available here in, in town. Oh, yeah. And, and that's something that, to embrace. If, if you it doesn't matter how good you are, you're involved in that intimacy and that hard scene that I think, like you said, we're, we lose. Yes, we're yes. I, I have taught drawing in Santa Barbara for over 25 years, both at Adult Ed, at Santa Barbara City mm -hmm. College, at Westmont College. And the activity to me is the thing is the that, thing. that and, and looking and being sensitive and slowing down, you know, I think a lot of my work is about that too. Yeah. Are you teaching it right now if somebody's watching? I, I retired. <laughs> retired uh, yes. from teaching, so. I retired from teaching and so now I'm working very hard uh, on my on own stuff, stuff yeah, which, okay. yeah, um, is great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, let's go back and, okay. and, and take a look at some more of the work that you've been doing. So what's this? So this was an exhibit that um, I had down at uh, Channel Islands, California State University Channel Islands, and it shows a variety of work. On the far left, you can kind of see the four uh, framed pieces are prints, some of the early prints that will, they incorporate the use of the circle, which is something that I've continued to right. use. Um, there's some small drawings, that little gray, drawing is a uh, handmade paper with a drawing on it and you'll get an example of that coming up here it is um, so this was a uh, paper i made out at the university i was um, able to use their paper making facilities wow. and i chose to make them circles and this was a group of drawings sometimes i will do these drawings during the season of lent as a meditative oh, practice so okay. instead of um, you don't give anything up, no, you just draw. Do, do something positive and, and connect with creation, uh -huh. you know? And so this is like white ink and black ink. Um, and, and the it, next slide, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, just to pause on that one, if we can go back for, for one second to the drawing that we were just looking at. Because to me, this is a beautiful work of art. And the lines are in just the right place. But there's, surely that's an intuitive thing on your part, right? How, uh, how, yes. how, do you know, how do you know where to put what? Well, there are drawings 
that don't turn out as well as others. Mm -hmm. uh, when I'm making these, one reason I like the circle is that I'm not stuck to the vertical or horizontal orientation mm -hmm. that we associate with the horizon or, right. you know. And so I, I turn them. I'll draw for a while without looking and then I'll turn the paper and I'll kind of look at it. And with keeping in mind that I'm focusing on one aspect of what I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. I'm not, sometimes I'm picking up the reflective light, sometimes I'm picking up a, a shape. Mm -hmm. So it's very intuitive, right. you know, whether or not it's like, oh, this feels right. And, and how often do you think, oh, this doesn't feel right and you just toss it out? Is that more often than not? No, I actually, um, you know, oftentimes maybe I'll do five in a day, let's mm -hmm. say, and out of that five, I'll usually like three or four well, of them. That's pretty darn you know? good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good percentage for well, the artist, I you think. you know, when time passes, I get a little more yeah, selective, right, right. and then when I go to have an exhibit, I am Even more up, selective, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right. yeah. So what are we looking at here? So this is a uh, pod, the remaining skeleton of a tomatillo plant that was my inspiration for the series of drawings that you just saw, the, uh, mm -hmm. the gray drawings. Right. And so I just kind of want to show you this. It, it's, you know, it doesn't look like that, but that's the kind of thing I'm looking at. Um, every time I do a different group of drawings, I kind of pick a different um, piece of nature. Okay. And frequently it's some sort of plant element. Um, in that exhibit at Channel Islands, there was also a, a set of grid drawings, and this is just one set of four that I had done. These were done in our on our property in the back we have a field of grass, and mm -hmm. I'm very enamored by the grasses in California. Um, they give me a sense of place, and I really love them. So again, here, these are in color, and um, the next slide, you'll kind of see an image of the, the grasses that I'm looking at, and it gives you maybe an idea, like some of these, I'm picking up the light. So this is maybe what I'm looking at okay. when I'm making a drawing like that. You would mentioned earlier that you're from Northern California. Where are you from? I grew up in Vallejo. Okay. And the hills up there are right. kind of, you know, they, they turn gold in mm -hmm. the summer like they do down here. And my father's family is from eastern Washington, and they had, he grew up in a very small uh, town and raised wheat, his family. They were pioneers up there. And so I'm, the landscape up there is very similar mm -hmm. to these rolling hills here. There's an area up there called the Palouse, mm -hmm. which is very unique. Mm -hmm. And so that's a theme that somehow plays out. The gold, the rolling hills, uh, is something that I kind of are symbols of for me. Were you a little girl who was drawing all the time? Or not necessarily? Uh, probably about the age of 12, okay. I remember starting drawing. and. And that was also back in the day when uh, John Nagy uh -huh. did drawing lessons uh -huh. on TV. Uh -huh. I have a few colleagues who, who were <laughs> fans, <laughs> <laughs> you know, who's kind of like Bob Ross, right, right, but right. for drawing, drawing right, you know. Yeah. But um, so at that point, I, I liked did drawing. Did you draw horses or what? I mean, no, what? I didn't draw horses. Um, I, re I, I remember drawing flowers, okay. you know, yeah. kind of na from nature. Uh -huh. I remember the moment I... I understood what negative space was. It was uh -huh. like, oh, if you draw that little shape, it'll look good. You uh -huh. know? I was like 12. It was kind of fun. You're like, mm. Yeah, this is cool. <laughs> I've got something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's take a look at it. We're going to um, move on to... This is a shot um, just taken a month ago, you know, a few weeks ago in the Westmont print studio. It's a pano shot, so right. it kind of shows the expanse. and. You can see all these circles on pieces of paper laying all about the studio. So I'm in the midst of printing up some large pieces. I've been printing up there for in the summers for about six years with a few other colleagues. We've wow. kind of made, done this self-made residency up there. But my goal this summer was to take multiple pieces of paper and create not just individual pieces, but um, more like a, what, what we're looking a, a at here. Yeah, yeah, so there's four, there's several, uh, the four pieces that we're in front of right now are four pieces of paper that are put together. 
Um, on the left, there's a duo. Um, so this um, is, I, I wanted to show this because you'll see, I think in the next slide, a print that gets, it's a component that okay. gets put into the larger panel. And so this was one of the drawings I made. Here I'm drawing, this was a series, my daughter is really into gardening and she was creating lily gardens and uh -huh. so I was drawing and that lily also becomes the inverted skirt uh, that, okay. you know. Um, so here I am in the print studio. I've got a plexiglass plate um, and I've created a dry point. It's, I don't know how much one know, you know about printmaking. Yeah, explain a little bit to so the audience. So you have a plate. Um, traditionally you would work on copper or metal, but that's kind of expensive. So I use plexiglass, which is common for contemporary printmakers. And I'm, uh, I have them cut in circles. Mm -hmm. And so I take the image, let's say that I drew on the circular paper and I'll photocopy it larger. Okay. And then I use it and I kind of trace it. And so a dry point is uh, you use no chemicals. You just scratch right into the plate. So I use a soldering iron Wow! It, because it gives me a little more fluidity mm -hmm. and I can get bolder lines with mm -hmm. it. So here I've, I've, I'm adding ink to those marks gotcha. and I've got it on a light box so I can see it a little bit more clearly. Um, here I'm just taking a piece of paper off. You see two round plates on the press that I'm just pulling off the impression. So I've run it through. And so each time um, I want a different shape or a different color on that panel, it, I run it through the press a different time. So it's a labor intensive process. Oh, it's, it's really <laughs> labor intensive. Um, and the, but you know, you were saying earlier, that's part of what it, it makes it important for you, right? It's, yeah, it's, it's really odd because I didn't study printmaking. Uh -huh. I didn't start taking, um, doing printmaking until like nine years ago because it was so process oriented. And now I find myself engaged in this highly uh, sort of um, detailed process mm -hmm. that I've created for myself. Right. Except that I try to keep the, the print itself, the plates are really sort of at the bottom low tech end. Okay. So it's dry point, you, it's a direct drawing process. Mm -hmm. And then the color, I just roll the ink mm -hmm. on and print it. It's just what I've developed as this method is like layering uh, and adding, it's kind of like a chess game. Mm -hmm. Like I'll compose on the bed, run it through, look at it, decide where I need another piece. Right, right. So it's really different, obviously, from like computer art. Have you, have you ever worked on a computer be, where you can do all these things in, in a matter it around. of moments? Yeah. Um, I haven't. I mean, I understand how that goes, but I... You're not tempted. I'm not tempted, no. I mean, when I was uh, in graduate school and before, I, I made money as an illustrator. Okay. And... I did a lot of hand illustration, very tight technical illustration for magazines in New York. And um, at some point, the computer came along, and that's why I ended up sort of losing that gig. Right. <laughs> but I consciously at that point said, I, I don't want to sit at the computer. Right. You know, you I want to use my hands. Yeah. I want right. to use my hands. Right. Yeah. So here is the, um, a, I, you can see my roller up there in the top left and my palette. So what I'll do is mix up my colors. It takes me a long time to mix my colors and spread it out. And I use the roller on a piece of glass like that to get a nice smooth application. Um, then on most of the imagery um, here, you can see I've inked up a portion of this round plate mm -hmm. and put it on the bed of the press. You can see all these bits of blue tape. So once I have the print in process where I've located a few shapes or colors, then I start getting a little bit pickier about where I want them to be located. So I have to uh, 
find, devise a way to translate that information. Sometimes I'll do a tracing off of the print and then I have to flip it and then I, I put these markers with blue tape so that when I drop my plate... <laughs> my I, head is spinning I Maria know. as you describe this. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, here's an example of this. This is what you get out of it though, yeah. Yes, so, but this is tricky because um, I had to register the shape, you see the yellow shape on part of the circle on the left and the large circle on the right, that had to go through at separate times because the bed of the press is only so big. And so I had to put them together. Here's another example. On that large piece that we'll get another look at, I started with this. And so this was that same image of the there we go. And the this lower is the beginning right, of the process. This yeah. is the beginning. So I have four pieces of paper and it, you know, it changed. At one point I went three and then no, I'm going to go with four. So then I added the other shapes. And this, and this is, is, what is the it looks finished like. product. This is the finished product. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I worked, I think there's 21 times through the press. Yeah, and there you that. are about to fall off down the wall. You're <laughs> <laughs> working so darn hard. So, yeah, the paper's big, you yeah. know, and it's physical. Yeah. It's very physical. Wow. I feel like I've just made all this work with you. It's really incredible. We got just 30 seconds left. Any sort of last words of wisdom you would impart to our, our viewers out there watching? Oh, gosh. Uh, slow down. Slow you know, down. Slow down. Look at things. Spend time looking. Take up drawing if you, yeah. you know, are inclined. Where would you say to go to find uh, someone? Ulta Dead. Uh, Ulta. Adult Ed. Adult Ed at, at, at City College. City, City College, yeah, okay. absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Thank you so, so much for being on the program. Well, this is fun. Pleasure. I appreciate it. The Creative Community is produced with a generous grant from the Diana and Simon Robb Foundation and directed here in Santa Barbara by J.P. Montalvo and his fantastic crew. I'm your host, David Starkey, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>